I flew Hamilton in. Why? Because he has to explain the tiebreaker impl <laughs> the implications to me. I'm that, you're that beautiful mind, Zach Galifianakis, when he's breaking down like the stuff in The Hangover. I don't want, I don't want to understand the tiebreaker situation of this bedlam that has become the NFC and the AFC, really. I know, you fought against it pretty hard for, for years now, yeah. but uh, this AFC one is the weirdest one I've ever seen with what's going on right now. Yeah. You got six teams tied for those two spots. Same records. Yeah. That's all weird, yeah. Hammy's in the building, guys. Let's get into what happened late last night. Eagles uh, could not get it done. They got beat up by the Cowboys. Uh, no offensive touchdown? Like, I had an anytime touchdown situation for Jalen. Thought that was easy? Nope, didn't happen. Seventh win in the last eight games for Dallas. And like we were talking about, lots of implications. Let's dig in. We got Hammer all over it. The Cowboys have taken over first place in the NFC East. Interesting quirk to all of this, though. If both the Cowboys and Eagles win out, the Eagles would still end up winning the division. And because of that and a very tough Dallas schedule, the Eagles were still, you know, pretty sizable favorites to do so at plus 320 over a FanDuel Sportsbook, even after taking those back-to-back. -back. Am I gonna call them a loss? And losses? I'm gonna call them a beatdown. Back-to-back beatdowns. It also means that the Niners have taken over the number one spot in the NFC overall. Philly and Dallas, same record at 10 and 3. Niners, 8 and 1 conference record. That gives them the edge there, and they do control their own fate here. Win out, and they get the first round by. Their odds to win the NFC are now just plus 120, almost even money there. But as for this game, it was yet uh, another entry into the Dak Prescott MVP case. Outside of that one fumble, he was amazing. He was on fire. He's keeping this incredible run he's been on rolling against stiff competition under bright lights. Over the last seven games, he's an NFL best 6-1. and one. 22 touchdowns, just two picks. No one else has more than 14 touchdowns over that span. And he's second to only Brock Purdy in both yards and passer rating as well. This one wasn't just about Dak, though. And you love to see it if we're talking about these Cowboys getting in, making some noise, doing all that. Stephon Gilmore, okay, Super Bowl bona fide champion. Cowboys snag him away from Indy for fifth rounder this offseason. This is as good as we have ever seen him. And I saw him a lot when I was in New England. We talked about it back when Trayvon Diggs got injured. And that was back in September. Getting Gilmore was, and whether or not Gilmore was going to work out and be successful, that was going to make or break Dallas. He was the best player on the field last night. He forced fumbles. He made big third down tackles. He gave A.J. Brown fits. It was a clinic and shades of uh, his DPOY season that we all watched him have back in 2018 in New England. And it wasn't just him. It was Brandon Aubrey. We love special teams on this show. Brandon Aubrey's ability to make kicks from the moon, from wherever he is, from the locker room, from out, like, what? He's, it, it, it is so, like, F you, like, whatever. He changes the complexion of the game early, puts his foot down, sets the tone, and basically, you know, that means this team just has to pass the 50 and, like, kick up their feet and relax, and they know he's going to do it. He's a rookie. This kid's a rookie. 59, 60. He adds two others as well to put him 30 for 30 on the air. He doesn't miss it. It kind of scares me when he's perfect, because, like, when you look at, it, you know, especially the later and later you get in the season, it's gonna happen. It's gonna get. Close. Oh, don't, don't do this, Brandon Aubrey. No, we are for Brandon Aubrey and make make, um, make Elliot and all of that. Like, but the, but that's. I mean, that is how long is that streak gonna get? Okay. Anyway, we'll get to the Eagle side of things a little bit later in the show. But uh, yeah, for this morning. You know, bussing with the boys is for the boys. We're about the Cowboys on the program. Dak went off again. What was the most impressive part of that performance to you? I, th I think the most impressive part is Dak's consistency of just throwing a great ball. I think he's had uh, seven games in a row with multiple touchdowns. The guy is truly putting himself as a MVP front runner right now. And so uh, we actually had this conversation, I think, when Dallas lost to the 49ers the way they did. And I said, listen, we got to take them out of the media a little bit, let them regroup, let them get going. Now it is time to jump on the bandwagon, the Dallas Cowboys, mm -hmm. and be like, this team is legit. They are real. I don't know if it says more about the Cowboys or the Eagles dropping two, but legitimately, I think it's 49ers are number one team in the league, then the Cowboys, and then uh, the Eagles. And Jerry Jones said yesterday, Dak Prescott needs to start giving love after this huge win uh, over uh, FanDuel. He's got the best odds, right? He's leading the MVP situation on FanDuel. You are saying the Niners, um, what do the Cowboys have to do to sort of beat them? Because, I mean, I would say the Cowboys are the hottest team in football. They've won, you know, seven of their last eight. Why are they behind the Niners? 
I think when it, it all comes down to strategic football and how you handle certain situations in football, whether it's two minute, four minute, we've talked about it so much on the show and it's such a boring topic, but mm -hmm. those are the little small details that get you over the hump from a talent standpoint. They're not far behind the 49ers, but I think the 49ers are a better team uh, from a talent standpoint. And, from a coaching standpoint of knowing what to do and when to do it uh, situationally through football or during the game, it's just they're ahead of them in that situation. When they see each other in the playoffs, it's going to be a close game. It's going to be a dog fight depending on, you know, who's what, where they're playing is, is a different story, mm -hmm. but it's going to come down to knowing situational football and being able to operate. Dak is operating at an extremely high level right now, but we've seen a couple of years ago, you know, they, they run a draw at 15 yards and the clock runs out in a playoff game. Like, you can't have that kind of stuff. You can't do that, especially when it comes to the playoffs. The big story, let's get to what you're saying. Let's leave the boring Cowboys alone, and let the boring Eagles alone and all of that. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe right here. Do it now for the latest from Up and Adam.